here all this while i told you foreign stories today i'm going to tell you a story of one of our very own it's a south indian story very fascinating and very intriguing so stay with me for a couple of minutes by the way if you are hearing me for the first time i am father nelson lobo a gone capuchin priest your host on the channel wandering guru I have another YouTube channel called Goinkar Guru where I post all my videos in Konkani in case you are interested to watch. So look out for more videos on the channel. You are now watching episode number 8 of my show Real Stories That Inspire Life. Well, this Indian story begins in God's own country Kerala. A mother gave birth to a premature child in her 8 month of pregnancy. This was precipitated because of the fright she received when during the sleep a snake wrapped itself around her waist. 8 days later the child was baptized Anakuti or little Ann according to the Siro Malabar rite. So who is this Anakuti and what do you know about her? Let's find out. Anakuti was the last of 5 children. Her suffering began when she was only 8 months old in her mother's womb. Her suffering got compounded when she was barely 3 months old. Her mother died 3 months later after her birth. This little Anakuti passed her early infancy in the home of her grandparents. There she lived a particularly happy time because of her human and Christian formation, during which the first seeds of a vocation flowered. During that period she had a vision of Saint Therese of Lisieux. There are many similarities in the lives of Anakuti and Teresa of Lisieux. Saint Therese was Anna's all-time favorite saint and a role model. However, the responsibility of bringing her up was given to a maternal aunt who was quite demanding. As she grew as a beautiful teenager, her disciplinarian aunt, who was her adopted mother now, brought many proposals for her. Anakuti tenaciously resisted all the attempts at engagement. She writes in her diary, "My marriage was arranged when I was 13 years old. What had I to do to avoid it? I prayed all that night. Then an idea came to me. If my body were a little disfigured, no one would want me." Oh how I suffered So with this thought local hagiography say that she voluntarily put her foot into a heap of burning embers and that she accidentally fell in the fire and her legs were much hurt It seems a priest her confessor directed her towards Franciscan spirituality and put her in contact with the congregation of the Franciscan clarists a religious congregation of the third order of St Francis of Assisi and through them completed her schooling on the 2nd of august 1928 anakuti began her postulancy taking the name of alfonsa of the immaculate conception in honor of saint alfonso's ligary whose feast it was that day so the secret is out now you know who is anakuti this story is about saint alfonsa the first woman indian saint of india from god's own country kerala after joining the convent in the period between 1930 35 she worked as an assistant teacher in the school and as a catechist in the parish church but she did not enjoy good health she suffered much physically and emotionally during a novitiate she had a hemorrhage from the nose and the eyes and profound wounds on her legs The illness deteriorated to such a point that the worst was feared. She wrote in a spiritual diary, "No matter what my sufferings may be, I will never complain, and if I have to undergo any humiliation, I will seek refuge in the sacred heart of Jesus." Heaven came to the rescue of the holy novice. During a novena to the servant of God, Father Kuriyakos Elia Chawra, a camelite who today is a blessed she was miraculously and instantaneously cured finally the day came the day she dreamt of 12th august 1936 the feast of saint clair the day of her perpetual profession it was a day of inexpressible spiritual joy for her 
she had confided to her sister Elizabeth when she was only 12 years old. Jesus is my only spouse and none other. However, she writes, from that time it seems I was entrusted with a part of the cross of Christ. There are abundant occasions of suffering. I have a great desire to suffer with joy. It seems that my spouse, Jesus Christ, wishes to fulfill this desire. Painful illnesses, my friend, followed her. Typhoid fever, double pneumonia, and the most serious of all, a dramatic nervous shock, the result of a fright on seeing a thief during the night in October 1940. Her state of psychic incapacity lasted for about a year, during which she was unable to read or write. In every situation, Sister Alfonso always maintained a great reservation and charitable attitude towards the sisters, silently undergoing her suffering. In 1945, she had a violent outbreak of illness. A tumor which had spread throughout her organs transformed her final year of life into a continuous agony. Gastric and liver problems caused violent convulsions and vomiting up to 40 times a day. She would comment, I feel that the Lord has destined me to be an oblation, a sacrifice of suffering. Voluntarily offering herself as a victim for the love of the Lord, happy until the final moment and with an innocent smile always on her face, Sister Alfonsa quietly and joyfully brought her earthly journey to a close in the convent of the Franciscan Clarist on the 20th July 1946. When she died, she was only 35 years old. She was buried at St. Mary's Catholic Church, Baranganam Travanko, present-day Kottam district. Sister Alfonsa was proclaimed blessed by Pope John Paul II in Kottayam on the 8th of February 1986 when the Pope visited India. In his speech, the Pope said, She came to love suffering because she loved the suffering Christ. She learned to love the cross through her love of the crucified Lord. On Sunday, 12th October 2008, Pope Benedict XVI announced her canonization at a ceremony at St. Peter's Square. With her canonization, the Church in India presented its first saint to the veneration of the faithful of the whole world. Well, my friend, that's the story of Anna Kuti, the little Anne who became Sister Alfonsa and later Saint Alfonsa. Hope you were inspired by her life. If you are sick and suffering, do listen to her story again and be consoled. Thank you my friend for watching this video. See you again in the next video. At your service, the Wandering Guru.